Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over a few tips and tricks when painting in Krita. These help speed up my painting process a lot, so I wanted to share them with you guys in case you didn't know about them. These tips are going to be specific to Krita since that's the program that I use the most when painting, but other programs might have similar tools. So I encourage you guys to watch the video and then check the documentation of your programs to see if you can find similar tools. So the first tool that I'm going to go over is one that a few people in the YouTube comment sections have asked me about, and that is the transform tool. The way that this works is you select the layer that you want to transform, and then I use the shortcut control T. This is the same thing as clicking on this icon in the menu right here. What this tool lets you do is scale, rotate, and skew the layer that you have selected. To scale it, you use any of these squares along the perimeter of the selected layer. You click on them and then drag to scale. But if you notice, this distorts the image as you move. So to prevent this from happening, when you scale, you want to hold down shift and that'll keep the proportions of the image that you are scaling. To skew the image, you'll want to go to one of the edges of the selected area. And when you see this icon that enables the skew, you just click and drag and that lets you skew that layer. To rotate, you'll notice that if I'm outside of the selection, you'll have this rotate icon. You just have to click and drag and that'll let you rotate that layer. But one thing that's cool about Krita is that it lets you rotate in 3D space. The way that you do this is you hold down control and then click in the rotate tool and that'll let you move it around in 3D space. So this is useful if you want to put something along a wall or something like that um, to make it look like a stamp. And to apply any of these transform edits, you just press enter and that'll put it into the new spot. The second tip that I want to go over is mirroring your project. So there's two ways of doing this in Krita. The first way is by going into this drop down image and then mirror image horizontally. What this does is it goes through all of your layers in this panel and it'll transform them to the mirrored view. So you want to use this when you're deciding that you want to export the image in this new mirrored view. But if you just want to preview as you're working, a much faster way of doing the mirroring is by using the shortcut M. And this will just do the canvas mirror and it will leave your layers in the original orientation that you started in. This is a good way of checking for mistakes as you're working because when you're in one orientation for a long time, your brain will try and make everything look normal for you. So as soon as you mirror the canvas, your brain will all of a sudden see all of the mistakes that you've made. And then that gives you the opportunity to correct those mistakes and make it look normal from both orientations. You can also use the panel that opens when you right click on the canvas. Here, this icon does the same image preview without changing any of your layers. Tip number three, rotating the canvas. The way that I do this is I press shift and then the second button on my pen to rotate the canvas. And if you want to reset back to the original orientation, you can press the number five. You can also rotate the canvas by right clicking, opening this menu, and then using this icon to rotate around this circle. Tip number four is filling the canvas with a solid color. Your first instinct might be to use the paint bucket tool, but Krita actually handles this differently than a lot of other programs like Photoshop. Say that I wanted to fill the background color with a purple instead of tan. I'll create a new layer, and if I were using the paint bucket tool, I would expect it to fill the entire layer that I have selected with that color. If I press the paint bucket tool on this empty layer below all of these other ones, it actually takes into account all of the layers above it and it tries to find any closed loops and not fill that space. 
So this cat sketch that I have here, it probably has an empty piece of line art, so it got inside of that. But it's going to take into account any closed loops, any filled spaces. So now you see here that this layer has a lot of empty gaps in it when we wanted it to just be a solid color. So to get around this, I use the shortcut Shift Backspace. And this doesn't take into account any other layers, it just fills that entire layer with a solid color. One thing to note is that this shortcut takes into account the selected pixels that you have. So if you go into the selection tool, select some pixels on the canvas, and then press shift backspace, it's only going to fill in the space that you've selected and nothing else. Tip number five is customizing your interface. You might have noticed as I've been going through these tips that my interface looks slightly different than yours. And that's because I've already gone in and customized it to the way that I like it. To add any panels to your interface, you can go to settings and dockers. Dockers is the term that Krita uses for these panels. So here you can see the list of available dockers that you can add. One docker that I like to use a lot is the overview docker. This overview panel allows you to see a preview of your entire piece. So it's useful if you're working on one close-up section of it and you still want to see the bigger picture of your painting, this allows you to do that. And if you want to pull any of these um, panels or dockers into your interface, you just drag it over it and you can put it in into any of these buckets. So if you put it on top of something, it'll just add a new tab. And then to pull it out again, you can just use this icon. Tip number six is ways of locking alphas. In Krita, there are two different ways of doing this. The first one is using this checkerbox icon. This locks the alphas of the layer. So you can see in this panel at the bottom that alphas are locked. What this does is it locks the pixels that are already painted on that layer. So if I take a brush now, and start painting here, you can see that it only paints in the pixels that already existed on that layer. You can't paint anywhere outside of it. When I disable that, I can again paint anywhere on the canvas. And you can see that this works for any new pixels that you add to this canvas, so you can keep using it to build up parts of your painting. Now the way that I actually use this in my process is I will have a sketch layer above a base color layer. I will lock the base color layer and then I'll take a brush and say that I want a brown spot on this cat somewhere. Then I'll paint in that brown spot on the base color layer and it'll stay within the space that I've defined that character or pet to be taking up. One thing that's really nice about this tool is it kind of functions like a selection on the canvas. So you can use that same shortcut that I talked about earlier, shift backspace, to fill in the active pixels with a new color. But say you want it to be more organized. As you work on a project, you can't just stick everything on one layer. Oftentimes you want to make a new layer so that you can add details or add some filters, but you still want to stay within a defined space. The other alpha tool that lets you do this is called Inherit Alpha, and that's this A looking symbol on each of these layers. It works best when you work in groups, so I'm going to take the base layer and I'm going to press Control G to pull it into its own group. Now I'm going to return it back to an all white cat so we have a base point to start with. I'm going to create a new layer above it and I'm going to activate the inherit alpha. So what this tool does is it will look at the pixels below it as the active pixels that it can paint in. So on this layer we have inherit alpha, I'm going to start painting brown. And you can see that it's looking at the layer below it in the group as the pixels that it can paint in and it can't paint anywhere outside of that. So I can do another layer on top of it to make this spot. Right now the inherit alpha is not enabled so it's painting outside of the area 
but as soon as I enable it, it'll look down the group and find the base layer and it'll apply that painting to the base. One thing to pay attention to when using inherent alpha and groups is the order of your layers. So say I created a layer between these two that have inherit alpha enabled and I started painting in this empty space. You can see now that the layer at the top is noticing these new active pixels and it's applying that paint to that layer. The way that inherit alpha works is it goes top down. So this layer sees that there's active pixels created by this reddish color and then it keeps going down and notices that there's more active pixels created by this white layer. So as soon as this has inherit alpha enabled, it then disappears because it doesn't have any active pixels to apply to from the white layer. So you can keep going with this and lock layers so that you're building up the painting and adding to the alphas that are available but the lower that you go, these alphas still only apply to the layers below it. Now onto some of my favorite tools that I use all the time. Tip number seven is finding a layer the easy way. We started using all of these new layers to build up on the alphas using inherit alphas and you want to change it in some way. You might go through all of these layers turn them on and off to try and find where the active pixels are, where the colors are coming from, but that takes a while. So instead what you can do is use the shortcut R. When you hold down R and press on the canvas, it looks for the topmost layer where there are active pixels in that spot. So if I tap here, you can see that it now jumped to the layer that is being applied there. If I press somewhere here, you can see that it goes to my sketch layer because that's the topmost layer that's being applied there. I find that this is a lot faster in finding my layers because then I don't have to go through every single one. I can find at least the area that I'm in within my layers. And if you find that the sketch layer is getting in the way, since it's at the top, you can just turn it off and then you can select the layers that you wanna edit do some fine tuning there and then turn the sketch layer back on. Since it's above everything else, I find it easier to just turn that off for a bit, add my changes and then turn it back on. Tip number eight and my final tip is for color picking, but color picking when you're using filters. I have my base layer here with some spots added onto the cat and say I wanna start adding shadows. What I do is I'll create a new layer, put the alpha inherit on and then change this to a multiply layer. Using some kind of blue tone, I'll add some shadows and then I'll turn it down a bit. Where this color picking tool is useful is if you continue with your painting, adding layers on top, changing the color that you've selected, you know, adding lighting, and then you realize that you wanted to change your shadow. If you just use the normal color picking tool, it's going to choose this gray color. And then if you paint in your multiply layer, you see that it's now reversing it. And that's because you're not painting with the same color you were originally painted with. If I reverse this opacity and I reverse this back to normal, you see now that this is the gray tone we selected with the color picking. And this is the blue tone that we used when we were originally painting the multiply layer. So you could always go through that process of reversing back to a normal layer, reversing the opacity, and then select this blue and continue with your painting. But an easier way to do this is using the special color picker. If you press Control Alt, you see that it enables the layer icon on the color picker. Tapping on the canvas will then select the original color of that layer. So that means it's the color before you changed from normal to multiply and before you changed the opacity. So now you can see I've selected the blue color and I can keep painting. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you've learned something about painting in Krita. And please leave a comment down below if you have any extra tips.